will speak uh, about the uh, uh, I'm not sure that if, if I need it. So do, do I have to use it? Oh. Okay, yes. Okay, okay. So how, how where to touch it? Like that? Or? Yep. Uh, and you can put that one anywhere and then you pop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe somewhere. Yeah, I'm not so good with this yep. so, so, so forwards backwards okay right okay uh, so it's a great uh, pleasure and honor uh, to, to be here so uh, i wish to thank the organizers so uh, well the set of organizers does not contain one person so it's very easy for the organizers to well to thank themselves in a cyclic order <laughs> uh, so to say and i'm, I'm glad that i can contribute to the session dedicated to memory of a great a friend and just remar remarkable person, remarkable mathematician, uh, Kirill Mackenzie. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a pity. Here's photo of Kirill in one of the happy moments. Uh, actually, photos courtesy to his uh, former PhD student Yakovs Andrulidakis, whom Pin mentioned. So it's a pity that Kirill is not here in person because he, he meant to come, who wanted him very much to come to this conference when it was originally planned. And well, unfortunately, well, uh, things change and the conference was postponed and uh, Kirill is no longer with us. So, uh, but he's still with us and uh, we owe very much to him. And uh, thank you, Pin, just for giving this introduction. Now, uh, what I'm going to speak about, so let me just, uh, uh, so the title of my talk. So it is. Uh, I'm going to speak about my work uh, uh, of some recent years. So actually, I came to some construction which I, I think it is useful, and I'm trying to promote it. Uh, and this construction uh, was motivated um, by some concrete uh, problem. Uh, well, related to well, general supergeometry, but uh, many. Uh, well, pieces of this construction, so to say, uh, well, uh, were inspired by ideas that I learned from Kirill. So to Kirill, uh, Kirill, uh, well, in, in his books, uh, developed various, uh, well, how, how to say, philosophical uh, things, and there's what, what he called cotangent philosophy. Uh, Kirill used, when I discussed with him, uh, he told me that he was using this in some narrow sense, but I understood him more broadly, and as a way how, how I understood him is that, well, um, in various problems, so passing, trying to see what happens on the level of cotangent bundles uh, may elucidate things enormously, and this is exactly what helped me in uh, just in this work. Now, so, uh, once again, uh, Looking at Kirill, so in brief, I'm 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 going to uh, to speak construction of certain uh, object or other morphism, uh, which is not a map. We all we all used to uh, to this categorical picture. So we have uh, in various uh, setups, we have various categories. We have objects and maps between objects which are morphisms in this category. And typically, well, in geometry, there is so-called well functional algebraic duality. So we have a space. In the most general sense, it can be well super manifold and can be Hausdorff topological space, can be scheme, and then uh, in parallel to that, there is algebra, which plays the role of algebra of functions on the space. And now this duality, which is in rather broad uh, sense, means that uh, morphisms or maps between spaces correspond to algebra homomorphism be, homomorphisms uh, between the corresponding algebras. So this is functional algebraic duality or well algebraic geometric duality, but it's not algebraic geometry, it's just uh, everywhere. So uh, starting from perhaps a stone weinstrass theorem uh, in analysis and then uh, say Gilfan Kolmogorov and then Grotendieck and, and so on up to non-commutative geometry nowadays and so on. But uh, what uh, I came some years, as I said, some years ago, I came uh, to some uh, surprising generalization of this picture where uh, instead of algebra homomorphisms, uh, well, acting on functions as we normally have, uh, uh, I came to the need 
and then the construction of something which is not linear at all, which acts on functions, but which is not linear. So therefore, for this reason, it cannot be algebraic homomorphism in the ordinary sense, but it still uh, has some properties uh, which, uh, well, uh, make it possible, well, ma make them useful, right? And, and make, make it possible to characterize them as kind of nonlinear homomorphisms. And so I will speak about this construction. So this construction was motivated by some questions about homotopy uh, Poisson structures. So basically, so well, so what we have here, so what I, uh, the name is thick, it's simply because I use thick arrows, right, to denote them, to dis, uh, distinguish from ordinary maps. So it's some morphism between uh, two manifolds or super manifolds. So it's not a map. I will, I'll tell you what it is. So, but the important thing is that it still induces a pullback of functions. And this pullback is a, a nonlinear map, as I said, more precisely, it is a formal map, right? We treat uh, algebras of functions as vector spaces. And for vector space, we can speak about formal uh, maps. And this particular formal maps are uh, more specifically their mm, so-called uh, formal, in, well, infinite order, well, because of formality, uh, differential operators, nonlinear differential operators or over ordinary maps. So you can think of, the, of them as kind of thickening in certain, uh, certain sense of ordinary maps. So you can think that there is an ordinary map and there is something around this uh, ordinary map and which is helpful for this as homotopy purposes, right? And you can compose them so you have a category, more precisely have what's called formal category, like a formal group. There's a formal group theory where the uh, group law, the composition law, is given by formal power series, right? And in and here uh, we also have well, with some restrictions, we can get a genuine category. But uh, in the most general uh, setup, you have a composition of morphism, specific morphism, which is given again by well, functional uh, kind of differential um, differential operator uh, formal formal power series. Okay, and, and, and have various features you have actually, because of nonlinearity, uh, when, when we deal with functions, well, and typically we work of super manifolds or graded manifolds, so functions themselves are graded, right? So they have parity, some functions are even, some functions are odd. And obviously, so when you have linear maps, you don't think much about that, right? So, but when you have nonlinear, uh, nonlinear uh, well, mappings, then you must be careful so you must distinguish which objects are even or odd because they have diff different commutativity properties, right? And so uh, for this reason, there are two parallel constructions like bosonic construction and fermionic construction, which go in parallel almost well, quite far away. They're just indistinguishable, but then some differences uh, start to pop up, but you need both, right? Uh, and uh, one of the differences is the bosonic case, you can quantize them. And uh, this quantum version um, is given by some particular kind of Fourier integral operators. And I should mention, mention here that um, remarkably, so this uh, construction, uh, which I started from just uh, concrete motivations from homotopy uh, Poisson uh, brackets, uh, actually uh, there is a overlap or parallel, um, I would say parallel development with uh, a uh, certain uh, very, very beautiful work that uh, Alberto, uh, Alan Weinstein, Weinstein and Bernard Deren were doing. So they have a series of papers of uh, uh, symplectic microgeometry. And so I have microformal. <laughs> so my terminology is uh, uh, similar, but well, different. So, uh, so, I, uh, so they're not the same, but they are very close. So there are a, a lot of points where they just, these two notions meet, and there are also points where they, they differ, right? So, but, and one of the connections again is in this quantum, quantum version. So there is a recent paper by these three authors where these connections are uh, just explored and, and, and mentioned. And now, uh, well, uh, some of you uh, uh, listened to my talks in, in, in the past, and some of you know about these constructions. So, but uh, I will mention some new developments. So we'll, a few pieces of new developments. And one of these pieces is uh, uh, how this uh, 
uh, well, at least it, it's, not, it's not particularly new, but so, but uh, at least I didn't speak about this uh, just uh, typically before. And uh, some, some more new understanding came about. So how this uh, thick morphs act uh, on tangent bundles and anti-tangent bundles, which is important for various applications. Okay, uh, so this was uh, in brief and now depending on how, um, so uh, Dimi, guide me. So how much time do, do I have? When should I stop? Uh, ten, past. Uh, ten, ten past. Right. Okay. Uh, very well. So I will, I will, of course, I will have to glide over certain things. So let me tell me the most important thing. Uh, um, okay. This motivation I mentioned uh, Poisson, uh, Hamilton Poisson structures. Well, um, if you have what is called uh, S infinity manifold, uh, that means uh, on on your function algebra functions you have infinite sequence uh, of uh, Poisson like brackets. Uh, infinite sequence that the, the, all, all the brackets are odd and they satisfy Leibniz rule with respect to, to all arguments and they're connected by infinite sequence of Jacobi identities, Jacobi like identities. So, more technically speaking, so they form L infinity algebra in the symmetric version. There are two parallel versions, so anti symmetric and symmetric. So, they make a symmetric version. And this can be described by homological vector field. Uh, if this thing works, uh, homological vector field, which is now lives in the functional space, so it is expressed in terms of functional derivatives, and so H uh, H is a Hamiltonian, uh, odd Hamiltonian, uh, which satisfies this uh, master equation, uh, the Poisson bracket of Hamiltonian with itself equals zero, and this uh, from here it follows that. Uh, the, the field itself is homological. And you see that vector field incident like, uh, well, resembles Poisson, uh, so sorry, uh, Hamilton uh, Jacobi equ uh, equation. Was, so it's Hamilton Jacobi type uh, equation. And now uh, suppose you want, so we, suppose you have two, uh, two manifolds, say M and N, right? And you have this S infinity structure on both. And so you want uh, not a just linear map. It's, suppose you have, you want a, a, a genuine L infinity morphisms, uh, L infinity morphisms between these algebras of functions, right? And what it means in this language, it is clear what it is. So it is a, it should be non-linear mapping between the correspondent functional supermanifolds, uh, such that there are the corresponding homological vector fields. Well, this one on say one manifold and the similar one on another manifold are related by this non-linear mapping of functions. And so we, we have a problem. So how to, we, we need some differential geometric construction, which uh, provides, uh, supplies uh, non-linear mappings of functions. Normally we don't have such, such constructions. Normally, so we have things on the level of functions, everything becomes linear, right? So for example, ordinary pullbacks, the first idea, ordinary pullbacks uh, cannot work because, well, uh, they're, they're linear. And so, uh, uh, and how 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 so how how it actually works? So let me show everything at, at one, one go. I don't want to uh, just drag. So uh, so what is exactly uh, ethic morphism? So uh, ethic morphism uh, is a special sort of Lagrange, Lagrangian relation or correspondence uh, between uh, cotangent bundles. So you take first cotangent bundle. Uh, uh, and uh, t, t star m1 and t star m2, and you consider a special kind of Lagrange relation uh, with, with two uh, particular properties. First of all, we treat it as formal relation. That means uh, we consider cotangent bundles as formal manifolds, formal in the cotangent directions. Okay, and actually, this well, it may look as a technical minor thing, but it's not minor thing. It's actually what uh, uh, makes the theory possible. Without without that. Uh, it won't work. And uh, it is described by special, you know, well, people, uh, well, if you remember Arnold's book or just uh, uh, Arnold's book, there's a famous saying that when you describe uh, Lagrangian submanifolds uh, by generating functions, uh, the number of generating functions Arnold wrote in different textbooks varies between uh, two, uh, two to n, uh, well, four and four to n. The correct number is something like two to n. Right, so there are many, uh, there are many uh, uh, different types of, of uh, generating functions for Lagrangian submanifolds. Basically, you need to choose independent variables, so the variables that serve as coordinates of your Lagrangian ma manifold. And now, so in our case, we choose one particular type of variables, not so obvious why we pick them. So we parameterize our Lagrangian submanifold by position. 
uh, variables for the uh, um, source manifold x are coordinates on m1 and uh, momentum variables uh, variables on the target manifold okay and in a moment you'll see why okay but uh, now it's part of definition so basically this is a kind of calculus of generating functions or particular sort of generating functions and now first of all what what what's the place of ordinary maps in this picture ordinary map if you have ordinary map you can just lift it on the level of cotangent bundles that's exactly where cotangent philosophy starts to work and you describe it by uh, generating a function which is very uh, a very um, a simple appearance uh, which uh, uh, is just linear in momentum variables in momentum variables on the target uh, manifold and now uh, the key thing. Sorry. Well, coordinate description. So, yes. so you have uh, okay on M one you have x a on M two you have y i is local coordinates. Yes. So you describe uh, your yeah okay yeah, and incidentally contrary to uh, well standard uh, notations uh, where q is used uh, for coordinates so q are momentum variables here well we don't have too many letters so we need to, to use all of them as we can uh, so uh, how we define so let's let's move forward so how we define the pullback so that's that's the key thing so we want to define so we're given this uh, generating function and we're given a function which is a function of y that lives on the second manifold. And we want to pull it back and to get a function of x. Now look at this formula. So it is very, uh, well, it doesn't work. Anyway, look at this formula. So you just write, write this way, but you need to have too many variables, right? You have, you need to, to eliminate y and q. And you eliminate it uh, just using uh, this equation, this system of equations. The system of equations, look, so they're uh, just linked. So you express Q as a function of Y, but here you express Y as a function of X and Q. So you need to substitute this into here. And then you have equation of the type Y is some function of Y. So it's like fixed point, well, you solve it by iterations, like fixed point equation. And well, uh, you may ask me how 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 get that, but actually I got it from uh, just uh, trying to express in this language ordinary pullback. But uh, if you uh, hate coordinates for whatever reason, uh, so if you prefer some coordinate free uh, uh, description, there is coordinate free description, which is hiding uh, the main thing. So, but coordinate free description is the following. So, you, we are given Lagrangian submanifold in the direct product of cotangent bundles, and also have a function on the second, sec, uh, second manifold. Well, you can consider the graph of its derivative, and it's again Lagrangian submanifold, and you can compose them. Well, if you can, but you can. And then the result will begin Lagrangian submanifold in the first cotangent bundle. And this will should correspond, well, as a graph of well, graph of derivative correspond to a function, which is a uh, pullback. But this uh, quantum free explanation hides everything, right? So the correct picture is here. And now it doesn't work, stops working. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they're a good, they're, they're good point. Actually, yes. Uh, so you need actually passing to graph of derivative kills constant. So actually this coordinate free description, uh, well, does not have integration constant. So, but when you uh, write this way, uh, you keep track of constants. So obviously we need, we need a function, not just as derivative. Okay. Uh, now, well, okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, it works. Okay, let's consider this model example well i slightly uh, enhance this example by adding a constant term so consider a, fu um, a generating function okay that's not. so consider generating function which corresponds to ordinary map ordinary map plus something okay and then well you believe in my we need to solve first of all we need to solve this equation just and this is exactly the case then we can equation are not linked right so we can express uh, q as a function of y but the important thing is that because um, the generating function is linear in momentum, 
in momentum variables. So y become it just this phi i's. And so you substitute, things cancel, and you get that. So what you, you will get is ordinary pullback, well, plus some constant shift, constant shift by some prescribed uh, function. So if there is no prescribed function, you just ordinary, ordinary pullback. So this contains ordinary pullbacks. And uh, how it looks like in the general case, uh, um, well, in principle, I can stand here and just operate using just arrows here. Thank you. Uh, let me just try. Okay. So in the general case, as I said, you do it by iterations, right? And so you may think uh, that besides uh, this map phi, which sits inside every morphism, you can just uh, consider this phi, call it phi zero. So you can consider some perturbation, some perturbation of this phi depending on G. On the function that you want to, to pull back, and uh, and this is exactly this why when you solve by, by iterations, and uh, all together when you work it out, so you will get the picture of your pullback. As I said, as a non-linear differential operator, formal differential operator. So well, you have some constant shift. Now you have a linear term in G, which is ordinary pullback respect to the map that sits inside thick morphism. As I said, thick morphism is a thickening of ordinary map. And now you have first quadratic correction. So this is linear. Now it's quadratic correction. Note that it contains, uh, contains first derivatives of G. And this is a general thing. So at each step, you'll have derivatives one, uh, well, one order plus one, right? And say, for, for, for example, the cubic term will contain second and first derivatives, okay? And they all evaluated, these derivatives of G, I evaluated at points corresponding to values of uh, phi of X. So that exactly, what is meant when when I say that a differential operator over a map? So it's a differential operator, nonlinear differential operator acting on functions on M two, mapping them to function M one, uh, over map phi. Okay. So unfortunately, I do not have a closed formula. So it's a good. It will be good if one can find a closed formula. At least I don't have a closed formula. But this is done by iterations. But now. Uh, uh, the main thing, what properties do we get? So why why we need that? Well, uh, I'm just keeping that. So it is all everything is just coordinate invariant actually. So it is well, this uh, generating functions are geometrical objects. Well, like Christopher symbols, right? If you use this metaphor, so they're not tensors. So but they behave in some way when you change coordinates. And so everything is just invariant with respect to um, change of coordinates. And so you can compose them. And a composition law again is given by some formula uh, of the same. So uh, similar to similar to pullbacks. Again, uh, you need to solve these equations, and eventually, if you calculate the composition law, it will be uh, it will be power series. But power series because of what? Because we have this constant shift uh, functions. So if we consider special case of thick morphs without these constant shifts, then uh, you have a genuine, uh, genuine uh, category. So. Uh, well, incidentally, so this is a. Some uh, the category uh, category that sits genuine category that sits inside this formal category, right? Like an affinization, if you want, a fine version of ordinary ordinary pullback. Uh, now, it, what that that's uh, a key a key property. So it's not just a random nonlinear map. It has the following property: if you linearize it, so at every point, so you have a nonlinear nonlinear map. You can consider its derivative. That means linearization near a given point, and this derivative then will be algebra homomorphism. And uh, well, probably I will not have enough time to speak about this in detail. So, but uh, there's a natural question. So we know that say, for example, for ordinary manifolds, uh, if you have two ordinary uh, smooth manifolds and have algebras of smooth functions, then if you have an algebra homomorphism, this every algebra homomorphism comes from a smooth map. So there's full duality here. Now, a natural question is, uh, do I have some analogy here? And this was a uh, conjecture. Uh, and recently, like about a year or two years, two years ago now, because of COVID, it's difficult to count time. So time has just been squeezed. So it was proven by my friend and colleague, Avanes Hudeverdian, who proved uh, uh, this conjecture that actually a thick morphism can be characterized by this property. So if I have it more, more precisely, so if you have 
uh, well, I have it in one slide, but it's very end. So, so let me just jump over the many slides that I won't be, won't be able to show to you. So just before that, no, it's not, no, no, wait, 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 it's not yet the end. Uh, yes, that's that. I'm, I'm just getting close to then. Uh, so uh, yes, so this is just about duality, as I said, and the, uh, the theorem that, that I mentioned is, is as follows. So if you have a, a, a formal a di formal mapping, which can be this well formal differential operator over a map, right, and which has property that is nonlinear homomorphism. Nonlinear homomorphism, by definition, you can define an abstract setup, is that a map between algebras which, uh, well, linearization at every point is order homomorphism, that it corresponds to my construction. So that, that means that these uh, thick morphisms are actually, well, the na natural, well, completion in a way, completion of the idea of order maps. So uh, this functional algebraic duality is preserved, but it becomes nonlinear on the level of algebras. Now, let me come back. Let me come back and show you, well, application. So, so uh, the one, that I wanted, like, uh, well, this is some recollection, so I don't have time to do it in properly. So the recollection of uh, uh, P infinity, S infinity manifold. And now suppose, well, these are homological vector field already. You already had, you seen uh, this one just before. So uh, suppose I have a full, a full situation. Suppose you have two manifolds. Well, actually, I have two super manifolds, or perhaps for extra gradient, gradient super manifold, and endowed with S infinity structure, right? And this S, S infinity structure is encoded in Hamiltonian. So, uh, so you have on uh, you have M one, and you have Hamiltonian H uh, one, which is odd and which commutes uh, with itself. And on M2, you have odd Hamiltonian, well, this is to say master Hamiltonian, uh, commute with itself with respect to ordinary Poisson bracket. And so these two Hamiltonians specify these S infinity structures. So, and question, so how to get a map between functions which are still infinity? And uh, actually, here the theorem shows you, tells you how to do that. So uh, uh, we call uh, a thick morphism. So the solution is given by thick morphism. So we call a thick morphism uh, S infinity thick morphism if its generating function satisfies this Hamilton Jacob equation. Right? So, and this Hamilton Jacob equation geometrically means it's, it's very simple. So you have uh, this. Lagrangian submanifold phi, which sits inside direct product. And now, so you have Hamiltonian, uh, sorry, uh, cotangent bundle for this, for the first one and for the second one. So you leave Hamiltonian there, you leave your Hamiltonian here, and this quality means that they are equal uh, on the relation. Okay. And one can check that this generalizes for ordinary maps, it will be uh, give you just Poisson maps. Right, and the theorem is that um, it's not very hard, well. It's not very hard to prove, but you need the whole apparatus. You need to calculate what what happens with on the level of functional supermanifolds, and what happens. You need to prove that the corresponding homological vector fields on the space of functions are related by the pullback by this nonlinear pullback. Okay, and so uh, that's actually. Uh, one of the main results from viewpoint of, of application. So you can, of course, have various versions of, of it. So if you have, there is a, a version for P infinity manifolds, but this requires a fermionic, well, uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, T star M, you can see the pi T, uh, T star M, and you have, instead of Hamiltonian, have a like multivector field, formal uh, multivector field. Okay. Um, uh, well, what 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 other things it, it allows to do? It allows to do uh, nonlinear adjoints. So if you have, well, we know that you have vector spaces and have linear map between vector spaces. There's actually dual homomorphism going in the opposite direction. The same for vector bundles. But uh, in this theory, because we need to deal with nonlinear maps. So a question is what what happens on the, when we pass to duals and when uh, and there is a dual for every 
uh, nonlinear map between vector bundles, but which is fiber-wise thick morphism, right? So, and well, incidentally, uh, well, I mentioned one name here, or actually two, two important names, which Mackenzie, Kirill Mackenzie and Pin Chu. So this is something that uh, they found. So this, they, this is called uh, Mackenzie Chu. Uh, is an isomorphism or different morphism and plays big role uh, in applications. Actually, also in parallel, uh, there's a parallel statement that also plays a big role. This is something that I found as a odd NL for that. So, under uh, if you have cotangent with an inverse uh, parity, so you need to inverse parity inside. So, this analog of McKenzie shoe for the fermionic case. All right, and so uh, uh, well, this is the quantum version. So this is the Fourier integral operators that I was uh, mentioned before. Before, so well, it's an interesting thing, but unfortunately, I have time to that uh, to speak about that. And but this allows to uh, do the same well, similar constructions for uh, brackets generated by BV type operator, but i Lukavsky type operator. So one can well actually for quantum case you can can be more explicit so you can write uh, quasi explicit formulas in terms of integrals so if you have brackets generated by delta then this is another example of homological vector field in terms of uh, differential operator but i will uh, uh, homological vector field and the claim is that uh, if you have let me show you something. Uh, how one can get an infinity morphism in this situation? So, uh, well, integral Fourier integral operators are obviously linear, so you, they, they, they cannot give an infinity morphism themselves, but I actually will give an infinity morphism by this uh, exponential change of variables. So, you first pass to oscillatory wave function, apply your Fourier integral operator, and they take logarithm. Right. If you pass to uh, uh, to the classical limit h bar times to zero, you will recover the classical thick morphism. But if you don't, so you're still uh, in the class, uh, quantum world, but you still uh, but you get your L infinity uh, thing, and and this corresponds to actually some statements from familiar people to doing uh, PD theory. Okay, um, one one uh, just I'm coming to the very end. So what happens? It turns out well that that's as for ordinary maps. You can have um, action on tangent bundles and anti-tangent bundles. Uh, so this is the action on tangent and the action action on. Well, I'm showing you just how things how things work there explicitly. So how it uh, the uh, what happens if you're given uh, if you're given a thick morphism which is a bosonic thick morphism, but on the anti-tangent bundle you get fermionic. A thick morphism and other way around. Okay, and I think I have uh, to show you. Uh, the, so there is penultimate slide, but I will show the last slide. Uh -huh. So in this perturbative expansion, uh, so you show the quadratic correction, and I don't know if you have this further. So I was wondering if, if, if that can be expressed uh, with this intended 